Look how she our fur matches each other. Hi guys, it's Em. Today I'm here with my buddy Kashmir, or just Kashi for short. He is an Indian fruit bat. He's not a pet bat. He doesn't live here at home. That wouldn't be fair at all. He actually belongs to the place I used to work at. I've just brought him home so that I can do a video with him. You will see me interacting with him in the video. It's quite cute, but please don't think that it's okay to do this with any bat. I don't endorse bats as pets. Although he is insanely cute, please if you find a bat wherever you are in the world, don't pick it up. Rabies is very serious and it is very prevalent in a lot of countries where a lot of you are watching. So if you find a bat, please leave it alone. Contact your local wildlife rehabilitator if you're in the United States or in the UK. We do have a bat trust as well. Another note I'd like to add is that Kashmir was not taken from the wild. He was born in captivity in England and comes from a long line of captive bats. Also, please remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's a fun place to be. I bring you lots of weekly creature features and I'm going to start inserting a couple of other things in there as well. Are you having a quick clean? Okay, you have a little clean. Take it, I'm not gonna hold it for you. Okay, I'll hold it. I also just quickly want to shout out the Birch Please Studio, especially to Fran, who creates these amazing necklaces. And I just love this one. It says, swallows are so cliche. As the name Indian fruit bat would suggest, Kashmir comes from India. He would live in a really, really large colony. They can be hundreds strong. And speaking of strong, the other strong thing, apart from their numbers, is their odour. It's not your fault, but you do smell horrendous. So they are indeed a very smelly creature. In fact, a lot of people, when they go travelling and they, they come across colonies, the first thing you'll notice is the smell and the sound. Often you don't even see them until you've smelt them and, and heard them because they are so loud. Although Indian fruit bats are listed as a nocturnal species, meaning they wake up at night, they're not strictly nocturnal. Indian fruit bats, along with Australian fruit bats, will periodically take opportunities to graze on fruit in the daytime as well as to bask in the sun. They will relax so much in the sun that often you can see fruit bats dangling from the trees with one foot whilst their wings hang down in total rest. Now I put out an Instagram post a couple of months ago where I showed Kashmir hanging upside down in my hand and I had this backlash, I had to remove the picture because everyone was going, why are you forcing him to live upside down? Why? Why would you do that? Well, they actually always live upside down. You'll never find a bat the right way up walking around. Indian fruit bats have two feet with permanently hooked toenails and a pair of wings. Many people expect to see these little hands and fingers somewhere on the bat's wing, a bit like a sugar glider. But actually, the bat's wing is the bat's hand. Indian fruit bats' wings are just like our own fingered hands with skin stretched across them. Their thumb is actually a hook, seen here, which they use to move themselves around the trees and to hook onto branches to pull fruit towards them. I haven't trained Kashmir to be upside down, he's just always upside down. He will eat upside down, he sleeps upside down, he breathes upside down, and females will actually give birth upside down. When the females give birth, they usually give birth to just one baby fruit bat, and they actually have to catch the baby inside their wings. So imagine they're upside down, they start to give birth, they have to lick the infant in order to stimulate it to breathe, and they have to catch it in their wing and hope that the baby holds on to them so that the baby doesn't fall off. As the name also suggests, they are also frugivorous, meaning that they are predominantly fruit-eating bats. Although they are frugivorous, they do have these really sharp pointy teeth and those are used to grip onto fruits because fruits are often a round or a spherical shape and they don't have hands in order to be able to sort of hold an opposable thumbs to, to manipulate and be able to bite effectively. So they do have to have quite sharp teeth in order to grip them that food and then what they'll do is they'll actually place it inside their wing and cradle that food whilst eating it upside down. It's quite remarkable. They really love the watery juicy fruits out there, um, for example grapes. And what they'll do, they will start by turning the grape in their mouth, chewing at the same time whilst turning with those really pointy teeth and then they use their tongue which is a triangular shape and quite long and, and very ridgy as well. Um, they'll use that to press the food up to the top of their roof of their mouth where they've got these bony ridges and they will scrape. So they basically look like this. They go 
so they just suck up all the juicy bits, swallow that, and then spit out any of the skin and some of the larger seeds as well. Kashmir and the other Indian fruit bats take the prize for the most adorable chamming or chewing sounds in the world. They definitely enjoy their food. Get ready to either fall in love or be severely repulsed. Now bats are really important. If it weren't for bats, there wouldn't be that many rainforests because bats eat so much fruit that when they eat those seeds, they carry them miles and miles away and then they deposit the seeds off in their droppings, in their guano. Indian fruit bats are luckily not endangered. They're listed as of least concern, which means that there are bountiful numbers of fruit bats in the wild. However, in the United States, there's a horrible disease called white nose, which is starting to affect lots of populations of bats. It's quite an epidemic and a lot of those bats with white nose do die. Can you let go of my arm please? There we go, thank you. Tell me a secret. I wish you guys could feel how it feels to have a bat sniffing your ear. When they smell, it actually vibrates really far deep inside your ear. It almost feels like there's a moth like right there just buzzing around. Yes, hello. You're too cute, Kashi. I hope my lighting hasn't changed too much. I took the opportunity to go and get a little drinky drink of water. Because it's good to stay hydrated. Would you like to stay hydrated? Let me know. Oh, you would. Lovely, I'm just gonna... Guess that's his now. <laughs> As a bat, living in a colony can be really dangerous because there is quite a strict hierarchy. You've always got the really big impressive males and they get first choice of which females to breed with. If you're a low ranking male or female, you get bullied really, really badly. They're really aggressive to each other. And if they sense any weakness in the group, they try and stamp that out. So if you are an outcast bat or you're a low ranking bat, you actually sometimes have to crawl along the floor on your belly in order to get food because you'll get bullied out of the actual good ripe fruit. Yes, and I know you're a bit of a bully, aren't you? Kashmir's a bit of a bully. It's hard to believe, but he does bully the other bats a little bit. In fact, sometimes when bats are bullying each other and having squabbles and scraps, um, they can tear the skin membrane on the side here. Luckily, that skin membrane is very fast healing. So sometimes you can see bats and when they extend their wing, you can see that that wing is actually torn. That will regenerate itself in most cases. Of course, where these bats live, there's lots of water around as well, lots of lakes, lots of rivers, and often they will fall into the water by accident. However, they can swim fairly well. Well, it doesn't look particularly graceful. It looks like the butterfly, but they can paddle themselves back to shore. Now, Kashmir's uncle was one of the oldest living bats in Britain. He was about 41 years old when he passed away, and his name was Eric. Unfortunately, the place that I used to work at don't have any official documents to prove it, but they are a very, very long-lived animal in captivity. You may have also heard of that term as blind as a bat. Kashmir is certainly not blind, and many bat species aren't blind. And there are so many different species. In fact, a quarter of all the mammals in the world are bat species. So that is a lot of different bat species. Kashmir's eyesight is decent. He's got a great nose, but his best sense is his sense of hearing. Those ears are constantly twitching around. He can hear everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed meeting Kashmir. Remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the Creature Crew, and we'll see you in another Creature Feature soon. Bye. Mm. He's pulling away. I'm getting denied here. Ha! Stole it. <laughs> Someone's at my door.